guys, welcome to Record Box Masterclass 7. Uh, today we're going to be going over more in-depth songs uh, and song structure and kind of how I lay out my library and set things up once you have all the basis down. So we're going to jump right into it today. And like I said, we'll switch genres. So we'll switch to a more so old school tracks, something that 30s, 40s would vibe with. Um, so for example, you're playing an outdoor party. So this is going to be some of the house music that you'd want to play, um, dependent on your audience. But this, uh, as a rule of thumb is a very good track. Uh, so I'll give you a little preview. So just your basic house boots and cats, boots and cats, you know, it's nothing crazy. Grids are pretty aligned. House tracks tend to be more aligned than other tracks. So we're going to use what we learned last time to grid this track. And just like before, take the track, drop, drag and drop it in, and then zoom in with either the scroll wheel on your mouse, or if you don't have a mouse, using these plus and minus arrows. And then what you can do is there's a, there's a trick you can use. So you can see this one really easily, whereas this, it's more of a, a cone shape and the waves aren't as big because it doesn't start as, as heavy. So you can actually double your grid so you can see where the second point would be. You can move your grid one over so it's lined up now and then half your grid. So what that's going to do is it's going to essentially make another grid point in between your tracks and then you have it so you know your grid's on point. Same thing as before, C and then M for a marker point. And we're going to find the drop. So here's a good good track where it doesn't officially follow the track drop. Whereas we're at 33.1, but I already know it's going to be four drops until the actual drop of the song. Um, there's not much actual drop, but it's where it changes over from phrases. So I'll play this out. So right there at the 37.1, that's where it dropped. So same thing as before, C, M, two. The C brings it to the grid, the M makes a marker point, and then the two gives it its B drop. So this is where things get a little bit complicated. So for this track, it's specifically, this is where you might run into some things where it's kind of by your discretion how you want to align things. So at the start of the song, we are on. So you can see with this part right here, where the marker's on in this part, they're all eight bar phrases. But once we get into here, we kind of, we have a weird, it's a 20 bar phrase to the drop. So it doesn't really line up with our eights, but it lines up with our fours. So it still follows structure. There's just an extra four that doesn't follow the traditional eight, 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 eight of the song format. So it's gonna kind of be how you wanna arrange this song. So what I'm gonna probably do for mine is I'm gonna make a marker point right here. So CM, CM again. So what this is gonna do is gonna tell me there's eight bars to the next marker point, eight bars to the next marker point. And we're at 16 bars essentially right now. What? So there's a couple things you can do. So when you're DJing, if you like it in this grid alone um, and or you want to pull it out, to the drop so you have one two you're gonna have this weird four bar here so i wouldn't suggest that i was just just having the 16 here and mixing throughout here and then letting it drop so you wouldn't really be overlaying two drops with this one necessarily but you can really do whatever you want i'll show you a quick neat feature um in record box to kind of help you with this uh i go between the two i don't really have a preference but some people do so as you can see, we passed this marker point and it's still counting up. So let's say we wanna know how many bars are to this next marker point. What we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to settings and same place as we were before where it says beat count display. So what I'm gonna do, count to the next memory queue in bars and or beats. So we're gonna do bars because that's how we're gonna run it. It's easier to see because there's just a lot of numbers with beats. So just like I said before, there were 20, 20 to the next uh, 
HQ or marker point, which is going to be this negative 19.14. So that's essentially the 20 right there. And it's going to have a downward count on when your next marker point's coming. Some advantages of this are you can tell when you need to have your next tracks lined up. So we're just going to grid the rest of this song to show you how it's done. So starting at the B, one, two over, CM, this marks the output. And then this right here is the end of this eight bar phrase. And then we have a drop right here. So this drop will basically follow through with the rest of the song. It's just these two weird four bar phrases right here and right here that could possibly get you off. So now that we have one track done, we're going to focus on loading in another track and it's called, this is like what I do with speed gridding. So I'm going to walk you through it still, but I'm going to go a little bit quicker this time just to get you familiar. So you're going to find, you're going to zoom in all the way. You're going to find your starting C M and then we're going to find the drop. There's our drop right there. So it's going to be C M B and then C M right here. So it's, I always do the 16 to the build up to the drop. And then we're just going to forward along in here. C M three. And then just, I just, I usually just go over a couple just so it counts down and it keeps that count running in case I want to go into the second drop. So there we go. We just did a song and we're just going to do one more just for the sake of it. So, this is a good example for it looking a little bit weird. So you can't really tell you can, but you can't where it starts. So in this case, what I usually do is I go to the drop, go to the drop right away. So this one's not as easy to see, but this one is. So what I'll do is I'll drag it over and this moves the whole grid. Remember? So once this one's lined up, I know this one's going to be lined up too. So I'll go C M two for the marker point and then the high Q on two, CM, CM. And as you can see, if we were to start it at this, there's a little, little vocal sample at the beginning, which we would have messed our grids up to where we're moving them on now. So we're gonna do the rest of the songs here. Just, we're gonna speed grid them. So grid them at your own pace, just so you have them all done. I'm just going to do them very quickly. Oh, so say I did a hot cue at the beginning. I don't want it there. All you have to do is go memory and then over to this hot cue and hit the X that will delete it from. You. So as I'm going through these songs, you'll see that I have a a marker set up at the top. So a big reason I use the A marker is in case the drop is incredibly long. All right, so that's good enough for now. We have enough tracks that are done. So quick way you can sort them um, is by clicking, oh, where did the preview go? So if you see your previews, um, oh, 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 we're gonna go to collection and see how you can sort by cues. So these are the ones that are done. We're gonna drag these into another playlist. So just as we did before, the test ones, control A, delete, remove from playlist. Then we're gonna to go to collection, drag all the ones that are queued into test one. So this is starting to look like a actual record box library in terms of this is how your final output tracks are gonna look with your BPMs all squared away and your tracks fully queued up with marker points and markers and cues uh, or loops. Uh, but the last thing to do is going to be to be sorting everything by genre, artist, album, uh, however you like to do that. So I don't really care about album when it comes to stuff because that doesn't matter. I never sort by that feature, but I will sort by artists occasionally. Genre, I sort most of the time by, and then key. So these are the ones that I usually keep. You just right click and you have the ones that you want up there. You can also go to bit rate. So the 320 is the one that you want to see, kind of what we did in iTunes from before. 
So we'll remove the bitrate because we don't need to see that. We already know what they are. And we'll put the key back. Where are we? I always lose key. There we go. And then key column doesn't need to be that big. So a quick way to do this is you have your side panel over here, which is going to allow you to tag. It's going to allow you to search through. Um, but we're going to be talking about that in next lesson, setting up all your songs, making sure they're in the right playlist and the right cues and everything. So that was a, a wrap for class seven. And I will see you guys in master class number eight.